what happened in the deal was that um, Ashley lent Stavely money to buy him out. Hello and welcome to the Anglo-Italian podcast. We've got a bit of a different episode this week with it being the international break. There's not much football to talk about. So we thought we would take this opportunity to cover a topic that we've wanted to talk about in depth for a while. And to help us do that, we have John from NUFC Against Sports Washing. Welcome to the show, John. Yeah. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. Um, So... I'm just going to get straight into it. We've been talking for a while on Twitter, had a few interactions. Now, obviously, Twitter is possibly the worst place to be on the internet. Um, I think we've all been involved in arguments on there. Um, I wanted to start with, how did your campaign start and what was the idea behind it? Okay, well, in my case, it started on the day of the, the takeover. You know, I'm a I'm lifelong Newcastle fan. I've been living in different places with my with my job, but I go to Newcastle quite a lot. But I was watching it from afar, and mm-hmm. I remember like feeling a bit uneasy. I was very, very happy, you know, that that got rid of Ashley, mm-hmm. ecstatic, exactly. Uh, but uh, well, I saw people sort of dressed up in Arab gear, Saudi gear, and I saw a few uh, Saudi flags, and I thought there's something wrong here, you know. So mm-hmm. immediately, I, I started. I wrote a couple of articles, you know, for for fanzines, saying uh, I just didn't think it had a future, and states shouldn't be taking over, mm-hmm. you know, uh, football clubs. And independently, I saw a guy on um, on Twitter with a Twitter uh, handle, uh, No Saudi Toon, Toon meaning town in Geordie, our mm-hmm. dialect. <laughs> and uh, so I got together with him. And then it was during the, actually it was during the um, pandemic, so it was hard to have uh, sort of face-to-face meetings. But we had some uh, online ones. First one, about 25 people, uh, a lot of people interested. And it's just taken off from from there, you know. It's uh it's been a, a long, long journey. We're all like ordinary fans, and mm-hmm. uh, it's amazing what we've what we've been able to uh, uh, achieve. But I think the main the main thing was just to put a marker down to say that look, unlike when Manchester City got taken over by uh, Abu Dhabi State, that there are a group of Newcastle fans, mm-hmm. uh, and we've got an echo in the wider sort of fa- fan base who don't believe there's a future, you know, for having you know bloody dictatorships. And also, you know, nation states own mm-hmm. football clubs, you know? Well, honestly, it's fantastic to see because I think personally, when I did see the reaction to the, like the Newcastle fans reactions to the takeover, it's perfectly understandable. I think a lot of it, like, as you said, the Mike Ashley era was particularly grim for Newcastle in general. And I can see why there was that like outpouring of relief, but I did see, I did feel uncomfortable alongside it, along, alongside a lot of it also. But if we talk, do you think the fact that Mike Ashley and his ownership was so controversial and so kind of damaging to the club, do you think that kind of laid the way for the new owners to be welcomed more than owners have been at other clubs, potentially? Well, I, I don't think the majority of fans sort of realised the implications. You know, and as I mm. said, I think there was just an outpouring of joy that Ashley went. But, you know, an interesting um, sort of aspect to it was I was involved in a sort of like... Um, you know, a, 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 a low level, but I, I did speak at a, a demonstration mm-hmm. about uh, you know about um, fan ownership because the the there was a there was quite a movement against Ashley, like you know, actually demos. You imagine, you know, football fans yeah, yeah. demos from Sports Direct shop to 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 the, to the ground, and it was over two things. It was over the mismanagement, uh, you know, the lack of ambition, but also it was linked to the zero hour uh, contracts. You know, the way mm-hmm. remember the way he. Tret his um, workers, or he turned up with a big wad of money and all that, and the workers were getting terrible. So, you know, uh, there was a campaign which linked up with the local trade unions. There was a banner in uh, a couple of mm-hmm. times in St. James's Park, Sports Direct Shame. Uh, then, you know, as I said, we had a couple of, couple of demos and we were talking about alternative uh, ownership. So, well, one of the things that we thought right from the beginning look, if we can um, protest against Ashley, his mismanagement, but also his, you know, the way he treat the his uh, work, uh, workers. So, you know, Castle's a very working class area. You know, high level of trade unionism. If we can do that, why can't we? Uh, why can't we um, protest against the uh, Saudi state? You know, which mm-hmm. is one of the bloodiest regimes uh, on the uh, uh, on the planet. And that's what sort of um, one of the main points that we've made in the campaign because every single um, fan group, official ones. Uh, like NUS Trust, uh, war flags, you know, do the flag displays, mm-hmm. but also councillors and MPs. All of them said that uh, being taken over by the Saudis 
wouldn't stop them talking about human rights. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And this and why, is what we have to keep reminding uh, reminding fans, but also, mm-hmm. I think, importantly, the political representatives as well, you know? Yeah, well, no, definitely, definitely. And why do you, why do you think that is? Because I think for a lot of fans like who don't support Newcastle United it's it is pointed out that people were perfectly happy to protest the zero hour contracts but now things are more serious less people are happy to why why do you think that is do you think it's because it's as simple as there's more success on the field there's more exciting football or do you think there's a deeper meaning or deeper issue behind well, that you know we found out a lot of things during the, the campaigning, okay? So, mm-hmm. for example, we orientated first towards the fanzine editors, you know, the fanzines and the official uh, groups. And one, of, one of the things that came out was that a lot of the, um, the, I don't know what you would say, almost like the gatekeepers of fan public opinion, like, the, you know, the fanzines, sort of started saying, well, what can we do? There's no alternative. Mm-hmm. And basically, uh, you know, what's the phrase there? Worshipping the accomplished fact. Okay, the Saudis have taken over. And then so we, we sort of realised that there was, there's a, you know, a small minority, which is a grown minority, us, you know, who, who say that there's no future for bloody dictatorships on in football clubs. And then there's, like, unfortunately, another my, uh, my minority, and I have to say it is a minority, but fans who are prepared to, um, prepared to support uh, the Saudi Saudi mm. owners, they're prepared to actually echo. And it, it's one of the things that we say is unacceptable. For example, yeah. I'll just give an example. We, uh, you know, we, we publicise um, the cases of uh, Saudis. There's a, there's a young girl at the moment, 18, but she was 17 when she was arrested for, for tweeting in favour of human rights. And she was given, in, in a terrorist court, think about this, in a terrorist court, she was given 18 years in prison. An 18-year-old is facing 18 years in prison. We publicised that. And then you get like bots and trolls coming on yeah. saying um, she's a terrorist. The unfortunate thing is, we know that comes from Riyadh, that comes from the from the Saudis. But mm-hmm. there's there's a layer of Newcastle fans who repeat it, repeat it, a small minority. But then what you to answer the question, the vast majority of fans are in the middle, and they mm-hmm. sort of say, of course, you know, we support human rights. But we, so we say, well, why don't you say something? Why don't you? Why don't you say? It? And I think the reason is, if it's conscious or unconscious, we don't know. But a lot of fans are happy, you know, that mm-hmm. Newcastle are doing really well. Yeah. You know, we've got um, you know great players um, in, the, in the Champions League, and so that I think it's unspoken, but it's, it's a bit of an unspoken fact. But if the fans do uh, do what we think they should do, is like have a banner supporting that young girl, mm-hmm. supporting the nine, nine young lads who are on, on death row. If we do that, then the, then the Saudis will think twice about. Um, about uh, you know staying at staying at Newcastle, and I think that has to be tested out. We have mm-hmm. to we have to do it, you know. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Because this is one of the things that when when a, when a deal like this happens, one of the um, excuses is kind of like when Qatar was given the World Cup, right? It's like, oh, by doing this, we will affect rule and change in that country. Jordan Henderson said the same thing about going to Saudi Arabia, right? You can believe that as much or as little as you like. Um, do you think that if Newcastle fans were able, if you were able to get more vocal, if you were able to be more demonstrative with this, that the owners would change how, or would change, not change how they think, but would be more worried about their perception? Do you think you would be able to affect change? Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a sort of um, uh, the line of some of the mm-hmm. politicians, okay? And this is another... Uh, Another question. Now, we're, you know, we're not really you're not criticizing with fellow fans because I, I think you know a normal fan would sort of say, "Well, look, my local MP, my local councillor doesn't say anything about it, and it's there's only like one or two have actually uh, said anything, and most of them just keep the keep their mouth shut, even though they said they would say something uh, 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 before." So this thing about um, will, you know, will it change? Will it uh, will all in Newcastle change the Saudi state? Okay, let's look look at the facts. That was actually. Put forward by um, by the fanzines, also, but you know, by by MPs. Well, what's happened since MBS has kicked, co- come into power? I think it was in 2017. Actually, things have got worse. You know, all, mm-hmm. all the human rights, uh, Saudi human rights groups say that there's been more executions, more people uh, uh, jailed for uh, for tweeting. And you know, who who who's been highlighted? Basically, they're going for young people and young women, uh, young mm-hmm. women especially. And the, 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 why are they doing that? And you have to think about why. Why, why are the you know the the spending money? They want to have the World Cup and all. But why why are they attacking young people and especially a young woman? Well, it's obviously their fear 
a revolution. You know, it's, yeah. you just see what's happened in Iran, you know, with yeah. the ri- rising of the, the, the women. So it, it, it's, a lot of fans are, oh, keep politics out of, uh, out of football. Well, unfortunately, it was the Saudi state who brought politics, their politics, yeah. to, 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 to Tyneside. So uh, as, as regards changing, I would think it's a case of the tail wagging the dog, really. It's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Saudi state um, uh, politics has infected Tyneside. I'll give a, mm. the, uh, the best example is recently we, we invited uh, Saudi human rights activists, um, Lina al Athaw. And she, her sister was one of the leaders of the, uh, the 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 campaign to get women driving. She was a leader, even though the, 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 they gave that concession. She was arrested, unfortunately, uh, you know, tortured, abused in prison, and I think now now she's on like uh, house arrest. Lena came to Tideside. She wrote uh, well, along with us to every single councillor, seventy eight Newcastle councillors. She wrote to all the MPs. You know how many uh, said they would meet her? Three. Three. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. What one MP said, uh, I'll do it in secret, but I don't want anyone known. Lena got up at the meeting. We had a protest meeting and there was like fans there and there was, you know, a, a, some, some, a, a small number of councillors. And she said, if I'd come here three years ago, I would have had meetings all day. And she said, mm-hmm. why are you afraid to stand next to me? And I think that is a very, very telling thing. It's, it shows it's not just about football. No. It's political. It, she, she made the point. She said, you know, this is not going to stop. They've got end, you know, bottomless pockets. Said if you if you've been censored, if you think that you can't meet Saudi human rights activists just because your team is doing uh, doing well, what are you going to do when Mohammed bin Salman buys local newspapers, mm-hmm. buys radio stations? You know, we, we, we've got you know we've got we've got some restrictions, but at least we've got the right to say what we think, yeah. and and we're actually not using it. That's the mm. problem on Tyneside, you know? And I think the similar thing happened in Manchester as well with uh, with City, you know? Well, this is what we I wanted to go on to next because obviously with the Man City deal, they it's since come out that there was huge land deals at cut prices and they've they've redeveloped oh. a lot of Manchester and they've now I'm I'm from nearby Manchester and I've got friends who live there and now the property market is insane and the, the like the whole city has changed completely because of that and some people would argue for for the better some people would argue for the worse is it something that you worry about with newcastle about how much influence they could eventually eventually have over the city well this is a, a fact a lot of fans say and I, and I understand this completely but they say you know newcastle or tyneside is very has been a depressed area lost mm-hmm. all the basic industry Me and my dad worked you know, in, in engineering, he was a turner. All those sort of factories are closed. The shipbuilding, the mines, and all that. So, well, we need investment. But we we would come back and say, well, you know, d- should we be relying on one of the bloodiest uh, dictatorships in the world for things to get better in our, our country? Mm-hmm. It's pathetic. You know, we should be looking for other ways of change. But what I would recommend uh, to any fan listening to this to, to go to the um, an organization called Fair Square. Mm-hmm. Fair Square are like um, a, a, a Middle East well, cam- campaign, uh, which is in favour of you know human rights, workers' rights, and they published a report called uh, "Easy Cities to Buy." Okay, and it's a comparison between what happened in Manchester and what's happening in Newcastle. And the point that they make was that there's a lot of talk about investment, investment. When you really analyse it, what has it been? You know, they've built these uh, uh, yucky flats. One of the pro- the problems in Manchester has been that local councils got taken up with the idea, oh, we're going to get money and all that, and they they sold off the land too cheaply, yeah. too cheaply, and then they they, they just sold, yeah, gave it away. And unfortunately, it looks like you know the reaction of the councillors and the MPs seems like a similar thing uh, could happen. We've been asked to say, oh, well, you know, what what do you do if they're, if they're investing? Well, what's what's the investment? It's very, there's a lot of talk about it. But we, we haven't heard of much. Mm-hmm. There's one little thing we're going to do right around the, the strawberry, I think. Strawberry, okay. around the strawberry uh, place where, the, where in front of the, uh, the pub, a, fa- a fan zone. But there's, there's very, very little. And also, we would throw back the question. Um, do you really expect uh, a dictatorship to have the best interests of, of, of uh, working class people, uh, you know, it, 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 to heart. Do you think, think that's what they're, what they're going to do? Look at the way they're treating the, the, the Saudi state yeah. in the NEOM uh, uh, project. They've got this project, uh, 2030. Basically, they're, they're uh, stealing land from, the, from people who, li- who live there, people who protest against it, 
a whole uh, there's a family uh, two have already been killed and then three three year uh, brothers who are from a Huati tribe, tribe I think they're called and it's their land and they just basically uh, they send the army in you know the police mm-hmm. get rid of them they've protested they're on death row yeah. you know you know <laughs> is that the kind of um people we want investing in our region you know mm-hmm. we've got to be you know we've got to be honest about it it's it's uh, it's deplorable absolutely yeah. deplorable you know? No, it is. It is disgusting. And so that's the that's the project. Is that the Line City? The city Neon, that's yeah, going to be the Line, city, right? Mega City, Mega City. Neon, yeah, yeah. The, the stories around that are horrific. And I think yeah. so. Going to like the the Newcastle councillors and stuff that you wrote to, or the Tyneside councillors that you wrote to, and this is where it gets really interesting as well. Is that the Boris Johnson was directly involved yes. within the within yeah. the negotiations for the sale of the club? Right, he was very pro the idea um, of of Saudi Arabia. Um, investing in the country so do like this is as big a problem as we've seen within states buying clubs and i think that's what makes it different to maybe when abu dhabi bought city right is that all politicians were directly involved in it well i I think you know obviously the british government but not not really representing the british people because they're representing ba sister ba systems the the arms industry that's who they, they represent and Basically, you know, MBS told Boris Johnson, uh, you know, it, it was in his interest to, to to push it through. And it's all come out, you know, Adam Grafton in the in the mm-hmm. Athletic uh, published the article. It's clear that the government was involved, even though they de- uh, deny, uh, deny it. They used it, oh, there's trade agreements, etc. But we know what they, what they did. So that's another question. You know, uh, Newcastle, Tyneside, so- solid labour. Do we really want, you know... Like, on, on the recommendation of uh, the disgraced, you know, liar Boris Johnson, mm. do we want do we want that that sort of investment? But one of the things that's happened with us, you know, just ordinary Newcastle fans, the more we've campaigned, we've sort of realised that um, despite what some Newcastle fans say, fans of other clubs are not jealous of Newcastle. You know, we have to be humble. We haven't won anything. You know, we're doing yeah. well. We're playing well. It looks good. You no, know, that sort of stuff. We haven't won anything uh, mm-hmm. uh, yet. And the, after. Uh, Person is a fa- Newcastle fan. You toned down a little bit of the, you know, the arrogance, you know, about, about it. And this idea that it's all going to be plain sailing. Okay, well, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to be like like uh, Man City. You know, the, the point I made before about um, Saudi Arabia and the political aspect. Uh, it's it's an unstable country, really. It, it, it yeah. gives the impression because we've got all this money, but that anything could happen. You know, it, it could fall apart. One of the points that um, the Saudi uh, human rights activist Lena made, she said. Nobody in Saudi Arabia has been asked if they want to spend millions on Tonali, for example. You know, yeah. nobody asks them. No, nobody asks ordinary uh, Saudis about this. Um, you know, the, the half a billion, half a billion that they've spent on uh, on Newcastle. She said, "Wouldn't we would prefer the money to be spent on infrastructure in Saudi Arabia? There is, you know, they, they haven't even got basic infrastructure in many, in many." Uh, in many places, and yet they're building this massive uh, mega city. Mm-hmm. And the other point as well, we talk about we talk about the Saudi uh, Saudi government. Okay, it's not not elected; it's a dictatorship. But more than that, it's a royal family. It's 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 a family, you know, yeah. basically. So this idea that it's all oh, the Saudi people you know, they're invested in in Newcastle. No, it's a royal family who are doing it uh, for you know sports washing, prestige, soft power. Uh, uh, reasons. But what I was going to say is that we have been contacted by a lot of fans. In fact, we're in touch with Man, Man United fans who are against uh, Qatar taking over. We did a joint statement uh, with them. They did a, uh, a protest. But a lot of fans, it's not not that they're jealous of what Newcastle are, are doing. They just don't think that there's a future for mm-hmm. nation state ownership. We had a meeting actually with the, um, along with the Manchester United fans, um, well, known to uh, Sports washing in, in um, uh, Man- Manchester United, but a meeting with the shadow um, minister, the Labour for um, for media and sport. We went through every single point, every single one about uh, uh, the orders and directors test that should be toughened up. It should exclude uh, nation states. It should, should occlu- uh, have a human rights element. Every single point, and he said, "I can't." This is the final thing: is I can't disagree with anything that you that that you said. Right, so we said, so we said to them, about the Man United fans says, "Well, um, uh, are you going to are you, you going to implement it when you get in power, or it'll not be a priority?" 
well, our message, you know, to 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 Labour or you know, Labour councils on Tyneside and, and around the countries, but also football fans, let's make it a priority. Because yeah. I, I think that if we don't, or we think as a campaign that if we don't make a stand against that, you know, Saudi zone in Newcastle, or Abu Dhabi zone in Manchester City, it's going to ruin football. Mm-hmm. You know. And he said, also, we've had, we've got, we've talked to yourselves, you know, the Anglo-Italian, but we've been in touch with uh, German fans, French uh, French fans. Um, so fans around Europe actually are concerned about this, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, well, it is, it is very concerning because, and, and it's why I ultimately don't really hold anything against Newcastle fans or City fans because all we want as football fans is for our team to do well. When we yeah. win, it feels good. And like, you can't, it's not your fault who's bought your club, right? This is the authorities. This is the government that have been involved. So we've, because you you said you've looked at the the owners' fit and proper test kind of in detail. What were the main talking points within that meeting, and what were the the main things that you wanted to change beyond let's make this a priority? What were the main like the missions? Well, I think we won the argument on on the mm-hmm. question of uh, the moral argument that basically. Um, these states are, but you know, what want to get into buying football clubs to improve their uh, image. You know, we can have a little debate about that, but it's it's true. You know, yeah. um, MBS uh, Mohammed bin Salman said the other day, "I don't care about sports watching." Like, oh look, see, it, it's not important. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? That's the kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's obvious. You know, that the, they've got to try and get the World Cup in uh, twenty twenty mm-hmm. uh, thirty four. So we won that argument, and one of the a, a guy from. Um, a Manchester United fan was was pointing out. He said, "You know, why did it go through? Why did they allow the the because there were there were doubts, you know, in, in some of the other clubs and all that." He said, "One of the things that we forget is that that you know, and we're not let, letting them off the hook, but you know, the owners of other clubs are, you know, they're not nice people either. You know, they, they, yeah. these are multi millionaires, billionaires, and all the rest of it. You know, and some of them were thinking, well." Hmm, if the, if Newcastle can you know sell for that for that amount, we could sell I don't know for example Arsenal or we could sell mm-hmm. Man- Manchester United. So probably they're looking for a payoff as well. They're looking for uh, a lot of money. You know who, who's next? I don't know uh, Qatar or or another yeah, yeah. Middle Eastern country uh, uh, coming coming in. So in that meeting we sort of made the point that, that if you if you're a football fan, you have got to like think ahead. So what's going to happen with football? We've seen with the Saudi uh, pro, pro pro league. That is basically, you know, a Trojan horse, you know, because yeah, yeah, basically yeah. what they do, it's going to be like they're going to distort the market. They get like, uh, you know, uh, um, big players there and they can lend them. They can, they can do, you know, they, they can do what they want. But basically, I think the idea is um, you imagine if you're, if you're a dicta- dictatorship, you own your castle, perhaps they don't do very well. Uh, would you accept being relegated? I don't think that's not their idea. I think their idea would be, you know, we've already had the European Super League. Do you not think yeah. that they want to bring that in again? You know, mm-hmm. so they they want guarantee. But I think football has, you know, it came from working class, and it's got still got massive work working class roots. Do we really want to turn it into like some sort of, um, you know, power game between mm-hmm. Middle Eastern uh, uh, states? You know. The, the press had it really well, you know. That the, the, as far as they were concerned, uh, the the recent uh, game between Newcastle and PSG, it was seen as Saudi Arabia against Qatar. That, that yeah. was that was that was it. You know, is that what we want? Is that what mm-hmm. you know? So it's a big debate, but we we'll have to look at like alternative ownership. You know, any we we would support anything that gave more uh, power to the fans. Yeah. You know. No, no, I know it's not perfect, but the Bundesliga, you know, the 50, 50% plus one, that would be a step forward, wouldn't it, mm-hmm. you know? No, without a doubt, without a doubt. And yeah. I think for a long time, the German model has kind of been, like regular listeners to the pod will know I'm a big fan of the German model. Okay, right. I'm really, <laughs> I'm in favour of um, like fan ownership and fan control. When you see clubs in the lower leagues where the fans have got together and rescued the club yeah. and ran the club, it's always yeah. like, you see, it becomes again that community thing. But that Newcastle PSG game, it left me with such a hollow feeling after yeah. the game because it was fantastic to see Newcastle win 4-1, PSG terrible <laughs> again, great. But after the game, I just thought, yeah, it did feel like we were watching political chess in front yeah. of us and these like these power games and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, um, if we talk about the club itself, um, so we, 
if we talk about the the people who are involved, so let's start with Amanda Staveley and um, Egg Eggbad, right? Eggdad. Um, they've they've come out and been. They're very much the face. They're very much the people who are trying to put a friendly face on this. What are the perceptions of Amanda Staveley and um, and the bloke in general? Well, because I feel like they come. They don't come across particularly well. Well, you know, there's, there's some news just come, come out. And it, it, the whole thing was quite murky, the deal. But basically, uh, Amanda Stavey was, was a fixer. She tried to get mm-hmm. uh, the Saudis to buy Liverpool, if you, if you remember, and they were told to, to go away, politely, that they didn't, they didn't want them. But uh, she's always been trying to like, fix up these, de- uh, these deals. But the stavey has got 10% as the Rubin brothers, who are, who are um, property de- mm-hmm. de- developers. Now, it's just come out recently, um, but I think it was to, uh, yesterday in the news that Stavely has paid off. Listen to this, eh? this is amazing. She actually paid off a ten million debt that she had to Ashley, so she owed Ashley money. Now you, I can see your your reaction Damn. to that. Oh, <laughs> wow! Right? Okay. You, know, you think it's confusing? You'll be more, even more confused now. What happened in the deal was that um, Ashley lent Stavely money to buy him out. Now. Just think about what is behind that. It's just madness, you know. Yeah. One of the agreements was the agreement was that they wouldn't speak badly of Ashley. So, like you know, there was the problem with the, with the sports direct uh, signs and all that. And yeah, she did yeah. say something in an off guard moment in a in a in an interview, and so so Ashley took an accord and he was asking for his, for his money back. Now, the, the next question, you know, you always say follow the money. Where did the money come from? For her to pay off her debt to, to Ashley, so that, that's the first thing. That's you know, an incredible thing. The other thing is that we we think that the you know the Saudis uh, state, you know, the royal family got the club. It's for prestige, you know, for prestige and all. The, those internationals that they had, which was scandalous, absolutely mm-hmm. scandalous. Yeah. Like the, the council until we got in touch and said because the gra- the ground is on the lease. Uh, mm. to, to from the council, it's owned by you know the people in New, uh, Newcastle, and we said, you, "Well, why why are you saying anything that the, you know they said that it wasn't the Saudi state?" And then they having two internationals uh, in Newcastle, but we think that they you know they're happy with the, the the way it's gone. You know they've got their names, they've got the sponsorship. The Rubin brothers are um, property developers, and they've brought up quite a lot of land uh, already. We th- we think. Um, I read somewhere that someone said that basically that uh, the way um, the Saudis see it was it's like commission for get, for getting the club. So the ten percent that Stavely wow. and the Roombras have got is like, well, yeah, you can deal with the the land, you can de- you know buy up stuff. They are they are buying buying up stuff. But you see, this is another thing. Ruben, the Ruben brothers, are massive. Or the family are massive. Donate. Uh, um, they donate a lot to the have donated a lot to the to the Tory party. Of course they Again, have. Again, of course ma- they have. It's a massive yeah. con- uh, contradiction. Some fans are actually saying uh, uh, one of the one of the minority owners said uh, because like all clubs that there's a uh, food banks. Think about food banks in in this, this day and age. You know, we have food banks outside the ground. One of the minority owners said, "Oh, we'll um, we'll double whatever's collected." It was like I think a publicity stunt. But one of our guys wrote an article and said, "It's amazing, isn't it? It's actually donating to a to a food bank." But this guy is is the one that don, donated to the party, which caused the the, the conditions that made we want to have <laughs> have to have food banks in the first place. So it's all you know, it's murky. It's a yeah. it's a murky it's a murky business. But the point the point I'm making about um about these these owners. Look! Look! It's um, the Saudi state or the runner. It's a kleptocracy. Yeah. Okay, that that's that, that technically that's what they they call them. It's it's not just the state. It's the you know the royal family. Do you think they're gonna have different business practices in in the in the, the Premier League? Yeah. Nah, for them, for them, for dictators, there's no rules. They they mm. make the rules for themselves. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely, completely. <laughs> and then the other person in the club who's taken a lot of criticism, and I myself have criticised him quite a lot, um, is Eddie Howe. Now, obviously, there's not much that he, when it's your employers, you can't just start calling out and, you know, whistleblowing in press conferences. But do you think that there's um, justification when people say he should be doing more or he should he should at least be more open to who his owners are and not just kind of it's not me not my job not my brief okay well the question of uh, Eddie Howe um, is that 
right at the beginning, he was asked, and I think correctly by journalists, what did he think about you know uh, working for you know basically the the, the Saudi state, Saudi state, and he, he said, you know, we've got the court there. He said, uh, I read the Guardian, I read the Times, but I haven't got the knowledge. Okay, yeah. I haven't got the knowledge to talk about. That was right at the beginning. Okay, two two years down down the line, has he not found out more uh, about it? Can he not make a, a comment? We we uh, we were approached by uh, this is you know a terrible um, thing that happens all the time in Saudi Arabia. We were approached by through the Saudi Human Rights Group um, about a young guy who was uh, on the run. He was in Morocco, and his family got in touch. And usually they don't use the names because it's terrible for you know yeah. for security and they, they could be punished. Now. But they were desperate. They were going to extradite him from uh, from Morocco. So his family wrote a letter and they said, well, "Can you deliver it to Eddie Howe? You know, in, in the place." And what 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 they said? What you know, Saudi human rights groups all the time write to Messi because he's an ambassador. You know, yeah. for I don't know how many thirty million thirty million dollars a year, um, and and to Ronaldo. Why do they do that? Because you know they're in a desperate situation. They're, you know, could be executed. They're in jail for. 30 odd, year, uh, 30 odd years, and they write to them. And that's now someone like, um, was it Lewis Hamid, Hamilton actually, you know, made a made a stand? You know, he went there and he, yeah. but he said, he said something. So we said, okay, we'll deliver the letter. We took the letter and we delivered it to, to, the, to the office. Not a peep, not a peep from, from Eddie Howe. And he said, uh, he, he said publicly, he said publicly, I'm only here to speak about football. Okay. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you know that there was uh, the old, um, uh, sycamore tree on yeah. the, in the Roman wall was chopped down. Okay, and he was asked in the, in the, in, the, in a press conference, and he made a point, point about um, about um, the tree being chopped down. You know, he said it was really sad that he'd never been to the, he never seen the tree, but he thought it was really bad. You know, some people pointed out that he could talk about a tree being chopped down, but he couldn't talk about a journalist being chopped up. You yeah. know, so it's you know, there's inconsistency, mm -hmm. inconsistency. We know as also that the young lads, most of them are, you know, in, in their early 20s, you know, like Don Ali and, you know, they're young people, you know, they get, they get the chance of a lifetime, loads and loads of money. But, you know, we'll keep trying. The, the other, the other um, person that we've been trying to get a comment out of is um, Alan Shearer. Okay. Now, unlike other um, sports um, presenters uh, linked to Newcastle, he actually did say at the beginning that there were issues. It's like a euphemism. He said, Alan, you know, they're not issues. It's beheadings and jailings. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah. use a euphemism to say that. But he said there were uh, issues and he said it needs to be addressed and we need to talk about it. Since then, it hasn't been talked about. But, you know, one of the things that happened was, if you remember, he was, um, he actually took action, solidarity, along with Ian Wright, for, the, for his colleague, um, uh, Gary Lineker. So Gary Lineker's uh, right to free speech on Twitter was being uh, was under threat by the by the BBC or by by the government. So we said, you know, we said we did we sent a, a, um, a tweet, Dallin, or a number of tweets, and, a, and we wrote an article about it. And it said, if uh, Gary Lineker's right to free speech on Twitter is worth defending, what about uh, Salma Al Shabab? What about Nor Al Qatani? Two women mm -hmm. jailed for. 34 and 45 years for one or two tweets in favor of, of, of human rights. See, we have to have consistency mm -hmm. uh, about these things. The, the other, the other one, you know, it's 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 unfortunate, but this has come up quite a lot. I and mean, you, you have mentioned you haven't asked us about this, but I think it's important. But the question of LGBTQ plus yeah. rights mm -hmm. is a group at Newcastle called uh, uh, Newcastle um, United with Pride. Okay, and. They were criticised not by us yeah, at, at first, but by a lot of other pride groups around football. Says, why are you getting, um, you know, why are you allowing the club to use you? Because basically, they're part of the officially sort of, you know, the club uh, uh, publicity about uh, LGBTQ plus rights. And uh, they said, oh well, you know, the club's doing good things on this issue, and we're, we're not going to say anything about it. So, you know. We we just we've made, we've made the point to them that uh, does the you know those rights do they end at St James's Park? Do yeah. they end in Newcastle? You know how can you have owners who are jailing um, gay people, trans people, you know uh, women? How how can you not say anything ab uh, ab ab about that? It's just inconsistent, you know. That is an incredible level of like compart 
soft mentalization. Yes, that is yes, an incredible yes. level of it. Yes. And it's really depressing whenever you hear these things because you want are you are you finding other supporters groups around that are starting to kind of like other Newcastle United supporters groups that are starting to join you, work with you, kind of come round to what you're saying? Well, it's it's hard, it's hard, right? Because it's true that the the success sort of makes people look a little bit the uh, uh, other way. But we, you know, we, we're not. Like, sometimes you get on Twitter, fans of other clubs like attacking on mass, you know, Newcastle fans saying they're all, you know, they don't want to know that, you know, they're going along with it. But you know, a lot a lot of fans are are pulled in 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 in, in, in different ways. But I think that the problem's right from the beginning because the people who who should have known better. Like the you know the like I said the gatekeepers of the fan public mm-hmm. opinion the fanzines but also local councillors and MPs they should have made a stand at the beginning and if they had the situation would have been uh, different but we, we had a, the meeting we had um, in September that we you know we, people came to the meeting that we'd never even met before and said people you know a couple of guys said that they'd given up their season tickets that the stuff going they couldn't take I think my, my, you know can see my, my sort of generation you know you know sort of like brought up in Thatcher's Britain in the 1980s mm-hmm. is probably a lot like us, you know, I think, well, you know, we, we, we just can't stand what's, what's happened to the club, my generation. But, you know, the responsibility that we've got is to the younger fans. We, we had a, a protest outside the international against uh, Costa Rica. Yeah. And um, that, that became quite controversial. And it's just short, just to, to explain how Newcastle fans think, but we did, you know, we did a protest and we, we on previous protests, we, 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 Protest outside the Chelsea match to to, to commemorate um, the eighty one um, people who were beheaded in one day before we played uh, Chelsea, which is terrible. We did that, and we were threatened. You know, mm. we, we were threatened on social media. A lot of it's just social media talk. But they said, "Oh, you come, we're going to do this, we're going to do that," but nothing happened yeah. because most fans respect your right. We knew that was going to happen anyway. The Costa Rica match, some um how can we ex- <laughs> call uh, a content creator who was yes. close to the club came along with his mates and they had saudi shirts on and they had like uh, flags you know saudi, saudi flags and basically it was to disrupt the uh, the protest and uh, what happened was we were doing interviews with with italian tv actually <laughs> we were doing <laughs> interviews with the uh, bbc it was like look we want to get our message out to my list and we'd already in- been interviewed by this uh, this podcaster and he'd done like a hatchet job and we're yeah. attacked with and all that sort of stuff. They said, no, we're going to talk to the press. We're not going to talk to you. And they were really, he was really annoyed with where had a go at where. But these guys started um, basically shouting down an older guy who, who yeah. just joined the campaign. Anyway, the, the, it was, it, it's all to do with the, you know, the, the, the technology, but they were taking like uh, film. And, anyway, mm-hmm. they put a tweet up. It got 3.7 million views. Okay, this, this tweet. And the tweet was, uh, they thought it was like we exposed the the protesters, blah, blah blah. Anyway, there was loads and loads of Newcastle fans came in and said this is disgusting. Mm-hmm. You're shouting down an old man, and what he was saying was was right. And he says you you are you are being ignorant. And the the, the problem is there's, there's a younger layer of uh, fans. Not all of them, you know, but we haven't had the proper debate. We haven't yeah. had a proper discussion. So they just see it as like, well, you know, uh, the Saudis have come in and give us loads of money. So we do our best. You know, we do our best. We've got a fanzine. We've got a website. We've had three editions of the fanzine. We have meetings. You know, we're, we're active on, on social media. But um, about more people getting involved, yeah, I think we are the ones who feel we're grown. You know, we, mm-hmm. we feel like we're getting more uh, more more support, but that incident at the um, at the Costa Rica match, Saudi Costa Rica, shows in in a way um, what could happen, the bad part of it, but also shows the potential. Yeah. Because most fans said they've got the right to mm. to to speak. Don't agree with them. Don't see there's any alternative. Like most most Newcastle fans say, well, what's the alternative? You know, what what can we do? No, I think that's our job. To sort of like say that there is an alternative to this, you know, there is, yeah. Well, exactly. I think the very the very least you can do is highlight the issues, even if you think, look, I like no matter what I say, they're not going to sell the club. Whatever kind of defense you come up with, you, the least you can do is is criticize and talk about what what they're mm-hmm. what's going on. Like, but you made an interesting point with the young fans and them seeing it as just because I I remember the tweet, I remember the video, and I think a lot of young people just saw it as like, oh. Um, the 
the influencer or the content creator won because he was louder, because he was shouting, yeah. right? He won the yeah. argument. Do you have a kind of strategy or a plan of how to get this message across to younger fans? Because obviously it's a bit of a sensitive topic, a lot of it as well. Yeah. Like, do you have a, a strategy of how you can get that message across to younger I fans? Think, I think that's a, that's a good point. And probably that's something that we need to look at now mm. because uh, it's clear that, um, you know, we when we put out stuff, uh, you know, the fanzine's been quite successful. You know, we're just ordinary fans, but I, I'm quite proud of what the the, mm. the campaigns actually achieved. But you know, guys I didn't know before have done like brilliant articles. You know, I'd recommend you go to the, the website and, and download it. You can get it for free mm -hmm. and uh, some really really good uh, material. But yeah, probably we haven't got uh, reached. The younger fans, you know, and, and I think we have, everyone has a responsibility to say, look, we need a proper debate about this. You know, we, we've got a lot of plans of things that we're going to do, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of uh, protests in the future, perhaps even like have a, a human rights sports washing conference in the new year in Newcastle. But definitely the, the side that you're, you know, that you mentioned there about reaching the young fans and having a proper debate, we need that needs to be done. You know, it needs to be done because, again, I'm confident that if, if, if the issues are put out in front of uh, football fans about the future of football and also about, you know, having human rights abusing um, regimes own, owning clubs, if they're put out fairly and, you know, in a sort of a democratic way, I think we could win the argument. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know it's shown that we are. So, I, um, for example, recently, uh, at that visit that we had from, from Lena, one of the things that came out of that is about uh, the role of the councillors. You know, obviously, you know, I said before that the the um, most fans said, "Well, if the councillors aren't saying anything, why should why should we?" But one of the things that came out, we we found out that uh, in Los Angeles, in Washington, they've got a street um, streets named after uh, Jamal uh, mm -hmm. Khashoggi. So we raised that idea and said, "Well, why don't we? You know, what, that that could be like a point of campaigning." Or, you know, let, let's explain it like this. Okay, majority of Newcastle fans are against uh, the, the human rights abusing uh, regime, but don't say any alternative. Okay, let's start a campaign to get a street around St. James's Park named after Jamal Khashoggi. Wow. But it's not just him. You know, there's obviously hundreds, thousands of victims of the regime. But that would represent, uh, it would make a break to, so, to show that Newcastle or Tyneside is, is, is a region that we don't agree with what they what the the uh, what they're doing because if we don't if we don't make a stand like that it'll just unfortunately you know you can see it outside of the townside buzz, uh, bubble how Newcastle are perceived now and that, that, you know this idea oh they're, they're jealous you know I said before they're jealous people aren't jealous mm. a lot a lot of fans are, are disappointed you know yeah. about how Newcastle fans have every uh, every reacted to, uh, to this and now. Wherever they go, they go to Europe. They go to different places. They're going to go to you know to Dortmund. I just saw it displayed Borussia's uh, last match. Brilliant display in English and German, and it's yeah. you know reclaim the game. Uh, you know, it, it, football's not about the billionaires; it's about the fans. You know, imagine what res response Newcastle are going to get when they go to uh, to uh, to Dortmund. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so you've got to be careful. You know, this, yeah. this idea. Oh, well, you know, we're not going to say anything about it. You have to say something, mm -hmm. as you said. You know, yeah, we have to make a stand about it. You know. Yeah, well, I'm I'm living in Milan, and I saw at the San Siro that there was um kind of murals put up of Ronaldo holding the ball with blood pouring out of yes, it, and Mancini, saw, yeah. and like. I think a lot of Newcastle fans realise that it's not only in England that they're going to get criticism, that it's going to be everywhere they go now. Um, yeah. And yeah, as we said, in Europe and especially Germany, there seems to be a bit more of a, a stronger moral compass in general with fan movements and stuff. But John, that has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you for talking to us. Okay, if good. we, well, when our listeners and viewers want to find out more about the campaign, where can they find articles, your campaign, where they can, where can they okay, support well, you? you? The, the link could be through, uh, through Twitter. It's mm -hmm. uh, at no Saudi tune. Okay. Mm -hmm. T O N T double O N or just very easy. Uh, N U F C fans against uh, sports version uh, dot dot net dot com whatever it's very easy to find just do a search and find but on the website there's loads and loads of articles there's also a couple of um campaigns that fans can get involved in mm -hmm. there's the local one to get to get uh councillors and mps to say something about human rights but the one which is i think has got legs and starting to take off is the notice um nation state ownership so we've got like a letter on there model letter you can send to your mp but also uh like we had recently uh I don't know, earlier 
in the summer, I think, we had a meeting on Twitter. We just thought we'd, we'd try it. It's Twitter spaces and mm-hmm. uh, about no to nation state ownership. 400 people were listening, but, wow. which I think shows the, the potential, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, on the website, you can follow the link to the to the fanzine, and there's three uh, editions of the fanzine, which is called um, uh, which is called Hailstones in the Desert. I just want to finish with, with why it's called yeah. Hailstones in the Desert, right? And the reason is because when we started the campaign, you got the usual, you know, bots and trolls who said, "Oh, you're all walk, you're, um, you know, <laughs> all, all the rest of it that you're uh, snowflakes." Snowflakes. And yeah. I was thinking to myself, you know, the the people we've met online and you know in person Saudi human rights activists are the hardest people I've ever met in my life you know mm-hmm. very very brave uh, people very very principled uh, people and far from being snowflakes these people are hailstones and you know they they're actually strong strong people so the the, the fanzines dedicated to them is de- dedicated to Saudi human rights activists because at the end of the day it's not just about you know nation states mm-hmm. ruining our game It's also your human lives are at stake here as well, you know? I absolutely love it. Thank you, John. We'll put the link um, and the Twitter page and everything in the episode description. Thank you for joining us, John, and we will have you back in the future, I'm sure. Ciao. Ciao.